Hello summoners and welcome to another Pro Guides video. I'm Crumbs and I'm here with our 1223 low elo tier list. Our regular tier list, which we post with the patch rundown and mid patch updates, is aimed at around the high gold to platinum skill level. This one covers everything below that. Obviously any tier list is a bit nuanced, but in general, this is a great way to know what champions to pick and which to avoid to instantly give you a better shot at winning your solo queue games. Before we get to the tier list, I just want to take a minute to remind you that while meta videos and other content are a great way to pick up some quick tips, if you're super serious about improving, you should head over to ProGuides.com. Our coaching staff is made up of top level players and they're available 24 seven. So it's always a good time to stop by. And for just $7.99 a month, you can take your Pro Guides experience to the next level. Our premium sub gives you access to all of our courses and bootcamp content, and we'll even throw in a 10% coaching discount. If you're ready to take your gameplay to the next level, trust me, it's worth every penny. Now, onto the tier list. As always, we'll start off with our top laners. The first move we'll be making is moving Ilawi up to the OP tier. Ilawi is an absolute monster of a counter to tanks as well as other juggernauts, and with them being so much more popular lately, it's no wonder she's performing so well. Her E is easy to hit against these big mobile targets, and she heavily favors extended trades. Then there's her itemization. Her standard mythic is already Divine Sunder, and Black Cleaver fits nicely into her build. She's also super good against bruisers. Even Fiora, one of the more OP picks in preseason, loses out to Ilawi most of the time in lower ranks. And with Ravenous Hydra being nerfed this patch, the matchup will be even more in Ilawi's favor. Regardless of who you're against, once you get a lead with Alawi, it's very easy to take over the game. Her side lane pressure is immense, and as long as foes are coming to you, rather than you trying to group up in force fights in bad places, you should easily be able to have a massive impact in most games. Maokai being buffed this patch is kind of a big deal. If you look at his overall win rate, he definitely looks like he needs it. But the thing is, as you can expect when the preseason is bringing in new items, a lot of people are building him terribly wrong. When built correctly, which means Jack Show or Gauntlet, Maokai is already doing pretty well. With some huge buffs to his passive NQ, as well as Sunfire Aegis and a nerf to Hydra, he's easily gonna be an OP tier pick this patch. With how strong he is and how easy he is to play, more of you should definitely be adding Maokai to your champion pool. Malphite is getting a pretty similar treatment to Maokai. Again, when built right, he's a lot better than his overall win rate shows, but he's not doing quite as well as Maokai even when built optimally and his buffs aren't as big, so we're just gonna put him in the S tier for now. He'll still be really good, but likely won't be as oppressive as the big tree. That said, this isn't 100% and maybe he will be. Consider it tentative and check back in the next video to be sure. Wukong drops down to the S tier. This is a direct result of the system changes on the patch. He's definitely still good, but just won't be quite as consistent as before. With Hydra's nerf and the big blanket buff to tanks, we'll be moving Fiora down to the A tier. Fiora is technically considered really good against tanks, but that's only when you have super good mechanics on her. For the average player, she actually struggles against tanks, since they can do decent damage and cut her healing with the Sunfire Thornmill combo, while those items make her deal next to no damage aside from proccing her vitals. In its current state, Hydra helps ignore all of that but the nerfs will make it harder to just roll over any opponent that you go up against. This is another sort of tentative placement, and she could be a tier higher or even lower. Lilia drops down to the A tier this patch. Losing 30 damage on her main trading tool is a huge deal. Lilia spams her Q a lot. Think about how quickly that nerf starts to add up. In a super long trade, you're losing out on a lot of damage. She'll still be really good against certain opponents, but she'll have a lot more meh or even bad matchups than before. I'd definitely try to reserve her as a counter pick rather than just forcing her blind. Shivana also drops to the A tier. She's been looking a bit weaker lately as a top laner on 1223 anyways, and with her also now getting a small nerf due to her strength in the jungle, she definitely doesn't seem as reliable as before. There are some good matchups for her, but there's usually another champion that can do more with it. Out of all the tanks in the top lane, the one doing the worst this preseason has been Cho'Gath. Don't let those social media videos of Cho taking no damage fool you. They are definitely in the minority. Most of the time, he's getting rolled in the top lane and being useless outside of laning phase. 
the buffs this patch will help his laning face a bit, but a bit isn't enough when a champion looks this bad. The most we can do right now is put him in the B tier, but honestly, he may need to be lowered to the C tier. He's another champion where you can maybe find a couple of good lanes, but there's certainly almost always a better pick than him. Now for the jungle, here's our list. We missed how well Wukong was doing in the jungle this preseason and as a result failed to move him up from the B tier in our last video. He definitely deserved to be in the OP tier. With Hydra's nerf this patch, he may be a bit weaker, but we're pretty confident he at least belongs in the S tier. Belveth also moves up to the S tier. She's a bit too inconsistent to make the OP tier, but when it comes to upper ceiling for carrying games, there really aren't any other champions that outdo the Void Mommy. Having insane damage output, mobility, and still being relatively durable makes her an extremely self-sufficient champion that can truly 1v9. Echo moves up to the S tier as well. Something we've talked about before on this channel is how when an assassin makes it this high on the tier list, it's kind of a bad thing. Assassins should always be a high risk, high reward champ due to their feast or famine nature. If they're performing consistently well to be in the S or OP tiers, it means they're feasting a bit too much and that makes for a very unfun time for the squishies that have to play against them. It's kind of hard to pin down exactly why, but Vi has jumped up in performance since the preseason started. Neither her nor her items have been changed. The best guess is that the jungle favors farming and scaling up a bit more than before, and that's definitely more Vi's thing. Trundle has been performing insanely well since the start of the preseason, and while the nerfs he's getting this patch will definitely bring him down a bit, we think he'll still be plenty strong. For now, we'll just be moving him down a single notch to the S tier. He should still be good in almost all matchups. That said, an attack speed nerf is one of the biggest you can give a jungler, so consider this more of a guess. He could belong a tier lower. Check back in next patch's tier list to see how things play out for him. Amumu has finally lost his crown as the king of low elo. He's getting some decent buffs this patch and that along with Sunfire Aegis's buff will help him a bit, but only enough to bring him up to the A tier. The thing is, Amumu really used the Omnivamp and Drain damage on the old jungle items for his clear. He's just a lot less healthy now once he gets through the jungle, making him more vulnerable to invades and making him weaker when it comes to fighting over Scuttle or if the enemy jungler is there when you go gank a lane. His scaling is still definitely nuts though, but getting there just isn't as reliable. The preseason has treated Evelyn extremely well. In high elo, she's a contender for best champ in the role. She kinda deserves it after spending the better part of the last two seasons as a borderline unviable pick. That said, she doesn't do nearly as well in the lower ranks, so we're just moving her up to the A tier here. Between his small buff on 1221 and the preseason changes, Zinn has seen a dramatic spike in performance. But the thing is, he was doing so bad before all that, that even his win rate going up by over 3% has him at a spot where he's just pretty decent right now. So we're just sliding him up to the A tier as well. The big nerf we talked about for Lilia in the top lane applies here too. Lilia's Q is all of her clearing power. If you think it's going to affect her trading as a top laner, you'll really be feeling it in the jungle. Since Lilia has such an emphasis on power farming first and interacting with other champions later, this will definitely put us low in her role. We'll be moving her down to the A tier. Jarvan has been doing better than usual lately, though that's not saying much. We'll be moving him up, but only to the B tier. The problem with Jarvan is that his kit is so good that Riot is forced to heavily undertune him so he doesn't become a problem pick. As a result, he consistently brings something to the table, but something just isn't enough to carry games where your teammates are slacking. Even after giving him a little hotfix buff after preseason went live, Shaco is struggling to make it in the jungle. We're gonna be demoting him to the C tier. Now, here's our mid lane tier list. Malzahar has benefited tremendously from the shift towards tankier champions this preseason. Between his ultimate's percent damage and the percent burn on Leandris and Demonic Embrace, Malzahar absolutely loves the longer, more extended fights against beefier foes that we're seeing now. This patch is shifting things even further towards a tank meta, and Malzahar may just be the absolute best mid laner overall in the game in the lower ranks and middle ranks. Zed moves up to the S tier. If you like playing assassins, he's 100% the one you should be abusing as a mid laner. 
His laning phase is strong, with every lane either being winning or at least neutral, and once you make it out of lane, you'll inevitably be able to find picks on foes that overextend even just a bit too far. The thing that makes Zed so much better than most other assassins is that he's even able to deal with beefier foes, like bruisers and even juggernauts and tanks when fed enough. He can swap up his build, going for items like Eclipse, Cleaver, and Shirildes to punch through the armor and tankier foes. If your opponents are especially beefy, you can even go for Blade of the Ruined King like the old school Zed builds. Now let's move things down to the bottom lane. The bot lane meta has been very stale lately, so we really don't have a lot to talk about down here. But there is at least one pick that is very interesting this patch. Zeri is getting a little overhaul that looks like it's going to make her pretty strong. That said, Zeri is definitely one of those champions that has always been way better in pro play and high elo than the lower ranks. So while we think she has S or even OP tier potential up there, it's super hard to know where she'll end up down here. For now, we're just gonna play it safe and throw her in the B tier. We'll have a better idea of where she actually belongs once she goes live, so be sure to check back next time for a definitive answer. To finish things off, we've got our supports. Janna moves up to the OP tier. There's kind of a funny correlation between ELO and Janna's play rate. Her win rate is about the same at all ELOs, but the lower in rank you go, the less people play her. What it sounds like to me is that players that are actually serious about climbing have no problem accepting that sometimes you gotta swallow your ego and just pick the champion that people make fun of. Speaking from experience, it really does work. The second I dropped champions like Lee and Thresh and picked up easier options like Volibear and Janna, I climbed pretty fast. Soraka moves up to the S tier. She's already been on the rise lately, and with this patch buffing tanks, it's also an indirect buff to Soraka. Less bruisers and more tanks means less threats diving onto Soraka, and longer extended fights where she gets to sit back and sustain her allies. And that about wraps things up for our 1223 low elo tier list. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. Since making this list involved going over all the champions in all the roles, I'm sure we overlooked a pick here or there, so feel free to let us know if you think we missed something down in the comment section below. And one last thing, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description box, where you can discuss League further or just hang out and be a part of our community. I can't wait to see you guys back for the next video, but until then, good luck on the rift, and may the LP gods smile down upon you.